back to another installment. Here we go again. It's uh, it's it's a Monday, which is weird. It is yeah. weird, and it's I, th- I we're preparing for the next great flood. Like we need to start loading animals Dude. two by two in our boats. It seems because. We're in Dallas here, DFW, and it, and it has is, rained for about almost two weeks straight. Yeah. Like, I think, getting close to it. I think we didn't see the sun for eight days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was uh, apocalyptic. Ugh, it's gross. Rain. So, um, yeah, so, of course, the, the the one good thing is is that we've been able to take some time. I've got a new boat trailer. Yeah, he does. We've been doing some work on the, uh, the 2.0, the Leaky Creek. So she's ready to go. I don't think I have anything outstanding left to do. I don't think so either. Get behind the stick and get some stick time. Get some stick time with the new cavitation plate. Which yep. could I think it's gonna get it. it got we had it, a little it, test it, run. It got it into. Did the, we talk about that already? I don't think we did. Or was that on Cameron's podcast day? Mm, I don't know if we did or not. I feel like we did. Maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we did. But if you didn't, if you're just hearing this for the first time, we try to take the the 2.0 the Leaky Creek out. What? So it's 12 by 36. 20 yeah. horse, 22 horse? It's a 16, 16 horse. horse. For, yeah. Long tail kit. And it's got an eight and a half inch prop. Yep. And then you put a cavitation plate, which really kind of focuses the yeah. power. We got it in the yeah. water, and then the hand, he put, put a, a, new, Z, a Z yeah. handle so he could stand up, and we get it in the water. And at idle, that thing seemed to be wanting to do like what, what it was throttle. doing to full throttle before. <laughs> then the handle spins because one of the bolts <laughs> broke off. Yeah. And then we slam into the river bank, and I said, we're done here. Yeah, right? we're, we're done. Like, we're done. Yeah. That's let's it. That's it for today. Thing up. So, and, uh, yeah, so we drilled through the handle. Everything's bolted up tight. Mm-hmm. New throttle cables. We're good. New throttle good. cable. Yep. You're squared away. I've got trailer guides on there now. i got Man. a new winch to winch the thing up. It's ready to go. You're ready. And I've still come out better than buying the new trailer. Because right. Facebook Marketplace, man. Got myself a steal. So. But that leads me to our good friend Bart, who's... Our guest today. To, our guest today, yeah. So Bart Likes from... Old Bart. Arkansas. And a, a famed cooker. Oh, God. Chef. Famed. Chef. I like cooker. Chef. <laughs> yeah, cooker, chef, guy with the grill, you know, yeah. dude with the, the trailer, trailer, whatever. Yeah. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm excited to be here. I did, I'd be 1000% honest with you. I just read the message. It was like, hey, you want to be on a podcast? I was like, yeah, man, whatever. Cool. I love talking. Uh, I had no idea uh, like who, what, <laughs> when, where. I had no idea. That's cool. And so yeah. I was just like, uh, but I mean, I love talking. And anytime I get to share a story or two, uh, I'm down. But yeah, so uh, I'm Bart Likes. Uh, I own and operate Old Bart Southern Eats. Um, started out with a '97 Chevy and a big old skillet, and uh, now we're uh, we've grown from a small enclosed trailer, and now we have a 32 foot uh, fully mobile kitchen on wheels that we travel all over the country in, and. Uh, Within the next, uh, I think it's uh, probably a month. I think we're a month away. We're going to open up our own uh, brick and mortar place here in Conway, Arkansas. And uh, so, in the middle of a pandemic, uh, we've done done well. Good. And then, yeah, we're going to keep growing. So, and then we're going to keep duck hunting. We're going to keep cooking in the outdoors because that's what we're known for. It's where we started off. And so, I've, I've got I brought on some partners with that, and I'm pretty excited to see. You how fast and I guess where it's going to go. I have no idea, but we're going to see what's going to happen. Hey, with right? everything yeah. with everything reopening, you know, some people say it's bad time. I think it's a good time. Because yeah. everybody's, tired, I of mean, being, everybody's tired of being at I, home. Everybody's going to want to go agree. do stuff, and now they got a new spot yeah. to go do stuff. I know Conway. I, my, I, I spent my summers growing up uh, hauling hay at my grandpa's very small retiree cattle hobby operation in Little Rock. Um, oh, okay. And he right would go to the Conway Sale Barn. And, yep. sell, and sell yep. cattle, so that's cool. Yeah, no, small world. Uh, and I, I don't know. There's only – there is like one or two barbecue places in Conway, but, I mean, it's 64,000 people, uh, and that's not even when uh, – call it. there's three colleges, and uh, so that means, you know, that probably doubles in size when college is back up mm-hmm. and running. But, yep. um, man, I – you know, during the pandemic, the only reason why I got this trailer was because of the pandemic. They opened up those SBA loans, and I was I was afforded an opportunity. I was blessed, uh, so we grabbed this. I, I built this trailer from the lug nuts up. Wow! Uh, and then we uh, we nonstop once we opened up, 
uh, I had to scale it back after duck season because I was gonna die. But when I first <laughs> when I first got it, um, it was July, and then I opened up July thirty first, and uh, we uh, shut down the highway sixty four whenever I opened up. It's a four lane with the turning lane, okay. and it was it was off. I mean, it was cut off. We had to get the cops out here and. Uh, it's not like that every day now, but we do <laughs> sell out the majority of the time, but we usually have a wait line and before we open up, you know, it's, uh, we, we've just been blessed, especially in the middle of the pandemic when people are closing down, we're opening up, you know, so Killing we just, it, too. it sounds like uh, that's awesome. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things and we try to take advantage of a situation while we can. Luckily I've got a lot of pu- good, great partners. I mean, real tree has been great to me. Uh, I'm a Traeger professional. They just signed the deal. And so we're, I'm excited to do some stuff, more stuff with them. Um, I've got a great marketing team behind me, Confluence, um, you know, and, and that, and that's, they're, they're the main ones, but like, I mean, I, I don't even know the people at split read, but, but they support, I mean, it, it's so cool when you're a genuine person. I think people are just tired of, um, faulty personalities yeah. and just junk people yep. Yep. and I, you know I, i'm blessed i'm thankful and I, I try not to be that way or you know i, I don't know where it's going to take me but i just i want to try to help and give back and do and there's a there's a there's a purpose behind all this and i think that kind of shines through whenever i talk and whenever i try to share the yeah. story that's why i really didn't care i mean I don't care if you got two listeners I, it doesn't really matter to me but the fact that someone asked me to talk and I, I mean, yeah, I'm going to yeah. take it, man. I don't, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not booked up. But yeah. yeah, my kids, yeah, I'm with my son right now and he might have to take a bathroom break, but that's about as right. busy as I got, you know, yeah. it's no big deal. Well, I mean, it, I think being genuine is just always such a, uh, especially Redeeming quality in just about anything you do. Just genuine people are, uh, I mean, I think it was pretty evident this weekend with like mm-hmm. Phil Mickelson and everybody. He's just a genuine good dude and everybody wanted so badly for that dude to win a PGA tournament that, it's just genuineness. It's the reason, you know, and we we found you through – these guys don't listen to sports. I do. <laughs> so that's uh, maybe a term that they, they don't even know who Phil Mickelson is. Um, he plays with Kobe Bryant, right? Yeah, see? <laughs> oh, dude, that's yeah, insane. yeah. Plays for the Marlins. No, <laughs> plays for the Marlins. I, I, oh, yeah, I, I that's one, that's one sport I do watch because I actually play, but yeah. I – I, I love some golf and uh, yeah and then and then he goes on his interviews and he's like well you know I just hit bombs I'm like way yeah, okay. to be humble buddy uh, you played with Brooks yeah. Kepka too much you know <laughs> yeah right um, I'm just out here hitting bombs just out you know? here dropping bombs um, so we I mean you know we we found you and kind of the first I started seeing you was you know obviously on Instagram but we're huge Doctor Duck fans um, obviously because we're Texas duck hunters and there is no greater Texas duck hunter. Uh, for me personally, than than uh, Dennis and Billy, um, and that's where we first came across they're you. They're genuine, and they're yep. genuine to people. Circle back you to know? that. Um, yeah. So I've become. I am now what is referred to as Candy Striper Duck in our little crew because I'm not nearly a doctor at all, or a uh, nurse even, or a nurse. I'm just a Candy Striper. Uh, <laughs> so candy stripe. I'm Candy Striper Duck. Not to mention, I have pretty much anything that Doctor Duck makes. So uh, well, yeah, uh, it's all good products. It is. Yeah, it really is. Stuff. We we just we just yeah. mess with him. It's, I, it's, I don't, it's, yeah, I don't blame. It's good product. So I showed up. You know, I've got the backpack. And I got all the stuff. So then one day I showed up and I had the license plate frame. And our other buddy Jared was like, "Are you kidding me right now?" And I was just like, "Hey man, you know." He tried to play it off too. I was uh, like, "Oh, that old yeah. thing." Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that that was the first time we saw you is uh, was out uh, running around with those guys. So how did you how did you get connected with with Dennis and Billy? Uh that's a good question. So I think I think which I mean I knew him. Uh, from whenever he was with Sitka, and then he switched over to Realtree, and so I followed him. I, I knew who he was, and then a friend of mine, Hunter Helms, uh, mm-hmm. asked me uh, to go hunting one time with him. It was opening weekend, uh, and I think that ended up getting filmed, but it was like opening weekend, and I brought my grills, and I brought all kinds of stuff like I normally do, and then it ended up being he. we were hunting with him. I, I think Hunter's a pretty good friend of Dennis and Billy's, yeah. and so uh it was just through luck and coincidence and then we were out in the middle of timber and it was really really slow and i'm over there in a boat whipping up breakfast burritos and if anybody knows dennis ain't well not necessarily billy but you know dennis he likes to eat yeah. especially during duck season so 
Uh, I, I mean, I'm just over there, you know, whipping up some breakfast burritos while it's slow. And then it's kind of just been downhill ever since. So yeah. it's, it's just, and then they did their release party, uh, when, uh, with, uh, there in Oklahoma outside of Tulsa. And, uh, they asked me to cook, uh, for that, which I know Aaron, uh, the marketing guy for them. And so, which all started from just being around duck hunting and then Instagram and just keep cooking. I, I mean, I just keep cooking and yeah. you just meet people. And then, uh, the, the group at real tree has been, uh, been behind me for a little while now. And so they kind of all connected. And when you're on the same team, you just don't know which, you know, what yeah. team you just, Oh, okay. Well, this makes sense. And yeah. we always need somebody to cook and I it's don't mind cooking. So it's let's a good do place it. to be, you know, Yeah, like you yeah. said, everybody yeah. wants to eat. So, um, yeah. So how did you get how did you get started? You just grew up cooking, or just like fell into it? A little no, bit later, uh, I, I mean, so this this is where kind of the roots of old Bart comes from. Uh, well, the cooking side of it. Um, so in four in two thousand fourteen. Uh, uh, so we'll back up just a little bit. So my mom uh, owned her own little catering business uh, called My Best Friend's Kitchen, and it was kind of a little concept. She used her kitchen, but she would always cater for people, but she would do a lot of teaching and she would do a lot of cooking at pretty much your house and show you how to yeah. use your kitchen. Uh, and then she always cooked growing up. She always cooked um, just for everybody, the neighborhood, the church group. I mean, it didn't matter. She was always cooking. I grew up like a barstool kid. I, I just sat at the bar stool and watched her cook. I, I, I didn't cook until 2015. Um I, I never really, besides cooking something to warm it up or yeah. whatever, I really never messed with it much. But I'd always, I, for whatever reason, I never really got into sports. I mean, I played and I played some college sports, but uh, I never really cared. Like it was just to be around good people yeah. and to exercise and to run around, and lift weights, which I always loved doing. Um, but but uh, in 2014, uh, my mom passed away from domestic violence, and so. Um, instead of, it was about a year there where it got real, real dark. Um, just not necessarily drugs, but a lot of alcohol and just suppressing all the yeah. emotions and just trying to hide it and didn't want to talk to nobody and just whatever, just going through the emotions. And I had lost my job. I'd gotten furloughed at the same time from, oh. uh, the railroad, Union oh. Pacific. So it was a real country song. Um, and yeah. so when it rains, it pours, uh, huh? <laughs> Uh, right. And so out of necessity, uh, I started helping a friend guide for ducks just halfway because I needed to. And if I can make extra money, cool. Also, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I just didn't know what else to do. So I, I, I really didn't want to hunt public land anymore, is to be honest with you. And I was yeah. like, how can I not hunt public land in Arkansas? Well, I bet I could help someone guide and I wouldn't mind the money. So okay, let's do that. And then we, we had an opportunity. Um, they're always, you know, how, how much people pay for duck hunting. Well, they yeah. pay, pay for that. And then they would always just take them in for burgers into town or whatever. And it just wasn't ever any good. Well, I started cooking. Uh, I just made a deal. And I said, you know, let me work for tips and, uh, pay for the groceries and, uh, you know, I, I'll just do it. Well, by the end of that season, I'd end up making more money than he did. <laughs> and so, it, it, yeah. And so I was like, man, here's here's a little niche. Here's yeah. a niche. So, uh, and then I got called back to the railroad. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, I found a little passion because when I first started cooking, I realized uh, why my mom cooked. I, it was the first time I realized like, hey, you know, it's just a little passion. It's a therapeutic thing. And then... I have a really addictive personality, so when I do something, um, dive in. <laughs> you're you're not gonna you're not yeah you're not gonna you're not gonna outwork me. Yeah, like if it's something that I'm doing, you better have a lot of medication because I stay up like just right now. I mean, I, you know, in the last like week, I mean, I flew, I, I went to Honey Break, did a, a weekend long thing, got home at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I went, and my wife was like, "Okay, cool, you're home." And she's like, when do you fly out? And I said, in an hour and a half. And so I went and packed my bags, flew to New York City, hunted a little bit, shot a turkey, came back, cooked a wild turkey pizza. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then flew home, and then we dived right into a two-day wedding. And then now we're right back at it. I got a 250-person uh, gig tomorrow. So, oh, man. Uh, 
if you think you can keep up, come on and run yeah, with us. Because that, that's the thing. I, I, I just can't because I look at my son and yeah, I, I have some stressful times just because I'm not. I, I had a dad. I had a stepdad that, you know, I, I uh, he deserves more credit than what he got. Uh, but um, I just never, I, 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 there was no, there's no instruction manual. I don't know yeah, what I'm yep. doing. I just know that I'm trying to work as hard as I can, especially leaving the railroad to do all this. Um, so while I have the energy, while I can, uh, you know, if you want to soar with the Eagles, you got to get up with the roosters. That's all I know. So, yeah, um, I just don't, I just don't go to bed. And so then I just say hello to the roosters when they wake up. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, <laughs> but a, that's awesome, I, man. It's just, it's just one of those things you grind and I, I constantly push positivity in my head to, to keep me going in the middle of the night. And when people are in bed, it's easy. It'd be easy to go to bed. It'd be easy to just, Oh no, it'll be fine. I can get it tomorrow. Get it now while you can. Because uh, you don't know when the faucet's going to turn off when it comes to business. Um, but sure. I, I mean, I started pretty much cooking out of necessity and therapy, uh, and it's grown from again that '97 Chevy with a big old skillet uh, and an opportunity. Um, and then I share that story. I always talk about mom. I try to talk to, talk about her once a day, um, you know, just to keep her memory alive. And and then out of the trailer, we try to give back. Uh, out of our portions of what we make, we try to give back to domestic violence shelters. We try to push awareness on that. Uh, when we start the new uh, restaurant, you know, uh, it will be a monthly contribution out of sales that will go to a d- local domestic violence uh, shelter. Uh, and so we want to do that. And then out of the trailer, uh, we just got so much that we want to help because there's no reason not to. Like we're okay and we're doing good and communities are supporting us. So why not, why not give back when we can and, and, and it'll all come back. But that's why we grind, right? That's why we grind. It's our passion. When you find your purpose, you just keep grinding. So sure. I don't know. I think people can relate to that in their own ways. All right. 100%. Totally. You know? Find something you, but, you're passionate about and you want to do. You're going to, you're going to do it, you know, whether it's, yeah, whatever it takes to do it, you're going to do it, you know? So I, I man, that's, a, that's well, an I mean, inspiring story. Just like, well, I, I mean, I appreciate it. It's just like that. Some people take it that way hunting, you know. Yeah. They just, they just, they, they get up early. They do everything and they want to, uh, they want to, come on, buddy. My son's coming in the trailer with us. That's so right. he's going to join us. That's yeah. all right. Heck so yeah. I, I just, I just, um, I just, you know, I, I really just want to share that passion and, and kind of keep everybody going. And, and if, if I can help anybody cook, I've been afforded some great opportunities and I've, uh, I've had a lot of people, a lot of key people, um, you know, whether it's just in a stressful moment, my anxiety's out of control, and someone didn't take it as a weak point. I've, I, one of my best friends is David Frisbee. And um, when I was hurting, you know, my wife, she, she's she been with me since I was 15 years old, so she knows me. But um, David, in the time of need, if my anxiety's going crazy or I don't know what, anything about business, you know, he's kind of like that shake him up and, hey, head down, grind, it'll all work out. And, and I've had a couple of those people yeah. um, in my life, and those people have made it to where uh, I am I can do what I'm doing now, you know, and then we're about to open up another business. And yeah. uh, and hopefully we've got plans five years down the road to open up another one. So That's awesome. I don't – yeah, just keep grinding, you yeah. know. David's good people. We, we've, yeah, we, we know, know David, David uh, from – He's he's a local boy here, so we we uh, yeah we we appreciate David a lot, you know. Absolutely, um, that's awesome. Um, you know, so you guys are cooking and on the road and and living the dream. <laughs> it sounds like so. Yeah, and my wife, it would not I, that people see me and hear me, but this would not happen without my wife. Yeah, uh, sure. Again, we've been together since we were fifteen. I've got two little ones. And, uh, she, she has her own job. She's an occupational therapist. So, uh, she's holding down and then she knows what I want to do and try to be happy. And, and she, she, I mean, it it wouldn't be what it is now without her, you know? And so, um, we, I just had a lot of good people and my wife behind me, uh, and supporting me, but yeah, we, we just kept cooking. And and then every, I kind of started out and I'm still this way, but I, it was kind of David who put me in front of a lot of people because I would always say, and I still do, 
if you'll just because I play golf, I was like, yeah. if you'll just set the ball on the tee, you don't have to worry about anything else. I'll yeah, take care I'll of it from there. It, yeah. And that's and that, I really just and then if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I've I've you know it's what is it you you, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take yep, right. Yep. Well, I promise I sh- I keep shooting because yeah. who cares? And and sometimes Absolutely. it works out for the best, and then sometimes you don't really at the time understand why someone told you no. Uh, but then you come to find out they're a shady sly some gun. Yeah, you know, and so why why would you, you ended up? It was better because you didn't have yeah, to do you, business with them anyway. Yeah. You dodged that bullet, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? No, that's exactly. Uh, and and you don't know that, and then but but David was one of the biggest people to just tell me to know my worth and. When I first started doing private dinners, I said, you know, it, it was kind of, he just put it in this perspective. And he's like, look, what are you making a day at the railroad? And I was like, I told him and he's like, charge that. And I was like, are you crazy? I was like, who's going to pay for that? But all it takes is one. Yeah. And then when you, and then again, they set the ball on the tee and I went up and I slugged it. Yeah. And, and, and then it's, it, it, it was that opportunity. And now you have validation so whenever you go to charge someone or you quote them again, you're like, look, I'm sorry if you can't afford this, but someone else has paid it and I know it's worth it. Absolutely. In fact, I need yeah. to go up on my prices, yeah, you know, exactly. and, and that's just, that's just how it is. And, I, and if I could tell anybody, and I'm not an entrepreneurial, uh, you know, expert, I just listen and try to adapt some policies that, that, uh, like Gary V, um, and then, um, just, just a lot of people that I listen to to try to do what they do or tell me what to do. Uh, it's just know your worth and um, be persistent. Persistent yeah. pays. Even yeah. if it's weird, persistence pays off, I promise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. I think, you know, that's definitely, I mean, even with this podcast, I mean, it's something for us that, you know, it's just like, just keep doing it, you know? I mean, yeah. you're going to have good podcasts. You're going to have terrible podcasts. Yeah. You're going to have Learn podcasts that ones. <laughs> never get to see the light of the day. Um, you know, we have, you know, we're trying to, to work on the video thing, but it's just like, keep doing it. Just keep, keep hammering, keep swinging. And I hate, you know, <laughs> it's that whole thing. But, uh, you know. Yeah, um, no, I mean, I it, agree. It, 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 it I, kind I, of is true. It's true. You know, you just keep doing it and you'll either succeed or you'll fail but something's gonna well, but what's happen what's the worst yeah what's the worst that happens if you fail and it's just like this okay well i've been laid off so many times with the railroad that yeah. i'm not afraid of leaving like i yeah. don't have a lot invested in it i mean i've got about i've got close to eight years invested yeah. but at the same time i've been furloughed for most of those and if you really put in this pr- perspective i mean i'm 31 i think 31 years old uh you know the guy i, I believe the guy who created gray goose was in his 70s so it's never, you're never, yeah. you're never, it's all about perspective. I really do believe that if you, if you're not afraid to fail and reset and restart, yeah. then what's, what's really the worst that could possibly happen. And I don't know if it's yeah. the same way uh, here as it is there, but right now, if I sold everything, I could go find a job right now. Oh, yeah. I could find a job yeah. right now. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm just not afraid to fail. Uh, it is it is scary because it's old bar and I don't want that to fail. Don't sure. I don't want to sound mm-hmm. cocky or nothing, but at the same time, um, I don't want to look at my kids when they come to me and tell me, "Dad, I want to be this or I want to be that, or I want to do this or yeah. I want to do that." How could I really look at them and say, "Don't be afraid"? If I was scared to be to do my own thing, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So yep. just trying to show them and teach them and hey, don't do that because I know exactly what happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You know, trying to trying to learn but that's awesome anyway yeah yeah good advice good advice so you have a line of like spices and rubs and stuff also right <laughs> yeah i do um so right now i've got five of them developed but uh we've got two of them in the works one of them is our old bart's uh barbecue rub mm-hmm. and then the other one's the old bart's uh whipping chicken and so and in fact just because it has the name of chicken we use it on Dagnum near everything. It's good on vegetables. It ended up being our allspice, but I love it on our chicken tacos. So like the barbecue rub, we use it every day on our pork butts and our briskets. And our briskets are Texas style briskets with a little bit of Memphis flair because that's where I'm from or okay. that's where I was born at. So I, I liked that and, but I love Texas style barbecue. And, and one thing that we do on the trailer, which not a lot of people do even on a trailer, um, is is we use prime grade brisket so we use prime grade cuts of meat so we charge for a premium product 
Um, and that, and that's what we do. So uh, I use a lot of salt and pepper and let the smoke do the work, yep. uh, because uh, you're paying for it really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, 100%. we use Berkshire pork, you know, even when it, pork's bigger up here than it is in Texas. Sure. So we still do a lot of shredded pork and ribs, baby backs and stuff like that. So that's still a popular thing. But, um, yeah, right now we have those two. And again, the barbecue rub, which you can buy online right now, right now my, I'm in about 14 different stores, so you just have to check locally. I haven't really done a lot with it, but uh, right now you can buy it online at Presley's Outdoors. He's he's one of my largest uh, dealers. Uh, been Kelly over there at Presley's has been uh, a fan since I met him at Honey Break, and he uh, he keeps me stocked up. He <laughs> keeps me on my toes with orders uh, and ev- everything new. I mean, he wants it when I put it out, so. He put it online, and that's where I send people right now currently to buy online. And that's presleysoutdoors.com. And you just, it'll show up, full barks, you know, seasonings. But the the big cuts, like pork butt, and uh, it's good on steak as well because of the heavy pepper content. Uh, but the brisket, that's mainly the barbecue rub. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the, the whipping chicken, like I said, it's good on pork chops. It's good on any kind of lean meat vegetables and and what's really cool is the more you add of that whip and chicken the hotter it gets it doesn't get any saltier uh it doesn't have a lot of salt in it which is cool um that is cool. It, but it will get it starts to get hotter on you so if you want some hot street tacos that's that's bet that's, that's the money zone yeah. you, Word up. you clearly do a lot of cooking you know, being that's your job but what's your favorite yeah. thing to cook um i i do like playing around with wild game sure. uh just, just playing around with it to try to educate people that you don't just have to fry everything. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and, and, or grind it right. in a sausage. Are the people that say, <laughs> I've had that. That's the worst meat ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I've tried that. And then, I don't like then wild the game. Re- oh, that's a big statement. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then you have the retort of that. Oh, well, you just didn't have it fi- you know, fixed the right yeah. way. Well, that, that doesn't help anybody. Because yeah. then uh, if you fix it for them and they still don't like yeah. it, then you've messed it all up. So. I do like wild game because uh, I do enjoy hunting with people. I'm not. I'm actually not a real big hunter. I know it's crazy. I I I, I hunted when I was younger with my grandpa, uh, but we ran dog. We shot any deer that moved. Yeah. Uh, just because it was to fill. It was brown. It's down. It's to fill the freezer full of meat. Yeah. But I never really hunted just a lot. And then if I did something, it was with friends. And then I got into duck hunting in college because we were having fun. Uh, and then, and then I kind of turned it into a business. But what's really cool is, you know, I, I still meet a lot of cool people that now want to take me hunting. And I'm like, this is great. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I guess my brain is pretty much full of cooking stuff. So I don't have time to like understand why a deer walks through the woods and, and he yeah. wants the white oaks. You know, I don't, I don't, I, I, I get you on that and, one. And it's the same. <laughs> yeah. It's the same way with like sports. Like some people can regurgitate every stat yep. that yeah. the Yankees have ever had. Nah, nah, son. Yeah. Nah, that ain't me. Like I can't. I can't like I think, think they're of a from boring, New York. More boring thing. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm that's, like, I'm, ah, I, but I love got you on that one. I'd much rather talk I, about I love, cooking than sports. <laughs> well, and I love I love going to games because I like fellowshipping. And so whenever I started getting more into hunting and cooking, I realized. That that's what my grandpa was doing. My grandpa didn't care. That's why they they enclosed a trailer and filled it full of food. It was about eating and fellowship and fun. And yeah, it'd be great if someone kills something, but it's just to get away. It's a break, and uh, and and so that that it, it was fun just listening to that, you know, and understanding. As I got older, that's that's what I realized. But I mean, I've I've killed more because of David. I've killed more exotics. Then yeah. I have like of a white tail or bullfrogs or just like what the common folk would go and hunt. Yeah. But because of Texas, great state, and hope they <laughs> don't change and they figure it out. Next election. Anyways, they're scaring folks over there in Texas. They're yeah. scaring them. So you make it we into live here, nervous, so we understand. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we feel you. Nervous. But, yeah. um, I, you know, I just had opportunities because of people wanting to cook. And they're like, hey, have you ever shot an elk? And I'm like, no. 
we'll come to Texas and we'll cook it. Okay, fine, awesome. Yeah. Shooting mm-hmm. elk in Texas, you know. So whatever. Dude, at but, night behind uh, a thermal scope, <laughs> that's the way to do it. <laughs> I, well, I know, and it doesn't matter because it's not like I'm saying, "Oh, I'm this great elk hunter." Yeah. It's I know I shot this thing in a pasture. It's a grocery store uh, hunt, but I don't care. I yeah, wanted to eat it. Not. You know, it all eats. It's delicious. It, no. it, I know, and it's wonderful. So, um, but you know, I think my favorite thing to cook is I do a whole beef tenderloin, and I oh, and I man. do it often because it was my first dish that I really sold. Uh, to a high end client, and it's like my staple, I guess. Oh, so yeah. I mean, I do love barbecue, but I do like a whole beef tenderloin, and I reverse sear it, yep. and then I'll do like a half a Cornish game hen. Oh, so you get yeah. beef, you get chicken, I guess a little feather and leather action, and then some vegetables that are fire roasted uh, with a potato of some sort. But that's um. That's kind of my favorite dish, just because you get a little bit of everything. I like Cornish game. Yeah, uh, my wife's yeah. family loves doing beef tenderloins, and I fully support them. And for, uh, was it Christmas or Thanksgiving this year? It was Thanksgiving. Um, they have a large family, and me and her uncle both got a big old tenderloin yeah. and had a cook-off. And did it nice. in a different ways, and uh, it, was, it was awesome. It was so much yeah, fun. I love, I love it. Beef it so, good. so much. It's just it's, so expensive, but man, it's worth style. it on occasion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you serve it family style, which I like. You know, slice it up and go. I know? love some horseradish sauce enjoyable. with it, kind of like a prime rib. Like, like oh like man, got to. Oh man, that's man. where it's at. That's where it's at. I want my freaking like nose what, to burn. That's you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! It's so. If I can add extra, I will. Absolutely. We um. We did that as a dish, a lunch for uh, Honey Break. Uh, we did like whole beef tenderloin lunch. sliders with uh, oh. with arugula and some uh, yep. red pepper, you know, red nice. onions, and and then you had the horseradish. Yeah, it was oh, a hell of a lunch. Hell, hell <laughs> I did lunch. homemade horseradish. Uh, her parents gave us a a prime rib mm-hmm. yep. for Thanksgiving for like Christmas or something, and I did homemade horseradish from like the root. It's that a whole was, different ballgame. It is incredible. Yep. It was so good. Stout. It yeah. was yeah, so like good. just like <laughs> yes. I, I thankfully I was like, okay, I'm like I, I was well, smart enough this. to to like go outside <laughs> yeah. too to like pulse it and like cut it up, you know. And that was like So don't get in the air. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. it's like, whoo, that's mustard gas. Like you know? mace. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh my god, my eyes. But it was so good. Like I I can't have enough like horseradish. Oh, that burn, oh, that, that, that well, burn horseradish so wasabi burn is cool. Is a yes. good burn. I just yeah. had sushi. The I do other like night, some sushi so too. Oh, I, yeah. I'm not good at sushi rolls, but I haven't really tried. But I, you know, and the more I cook, the more I respect people that are in the kitchen. Yeah. If you've never worked in food industry, you have no idea. Yeah. Absolutely, like that, oh, yeah. and it's just you've and those people that are rude to people, even when someone's having a bad day yeah. at uh, at the restaurant, and they yeah. miss something up or whatever. You still have no clue if you've never worked in the nope. food industry. For me to be well, and, and be, being rude to people in general is just, something that yeah. it is just that's one of my pet peeves. Yeah. Like just lay off. I spent so much time waiting tables. I never yeah, worked back in the house. A lot of time. I just I've I think I've only been like rude to a waiter one time, and for me to get to that point was such an escalation of like just didn't fell apart. What are you doing? Like like. I've asked you're you. You're not even trying. Yeah, you're not even trying. You, you're just, you're being no. an asshole right now. You know, like, you're not even, like, yeah. I asked you eight times, like, eight times. For water. For, I mean, like, that, and you know what? It was at the Beloved Did that you, one time. You me that. And it was like, I oh, was wow. like, hey, I asked you, like, we were like, hey, we, uh, can we, that coffee? Oh, yeah, no problem. Hey, hey, um, coffee, whenever you get a chance. And not even, like, flagging them down. Just, like, when she came back, hey, Next time you're around, need a two to coffee. I don't know if you've noticed, we're out of coffee completely now. You know, like, uh, oh yeah, I'll bring it to you. And finally, it was just like, hey man, like, could what? you like go and get the coffee and bring it right back? This is like eight What's times going now. On here? Yeah. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, um, but I just I, I think I was talking to my sister who's in the was in the military the other day, and we were talking about how there should be two standard things that you have to do in this country. One is either serve in the military. Or work in the food service industry. You can go any path you want. A year, but you got to go at least one year, <laughs> year into either one of those fields. Absolutely. Because I've never met somebody who worked in the food service industry who is rude to people, in like just like for no reason. Yeah. Just right. You know. 
They've got to have like a reason. And, yeah, well, and, and, and at least if you're rude. So, like, and not necessarily rude. It's just like a correct. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, uh, I still don't have a drink, and I'm okay yeah. with that. Like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I, I have no perspective of what's going on back there. Maybe the ice machine's broken. Yeah. I don't know. But I am about to die. Yeah. Please give me yeah. something to drink. Exactly. Like, you know, yeah. exactly. <laughs> we went out with Jared and Steffi for dinner one night recently. Went to, I don't know, a nice restaurant, but it's more than Chili's, yeah. right? Um, and I don't know. With everything opening back up, and you know the 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 hurt, for lack of a better word, that was put on that whole industry during this. I don't know. I just feel like you should be trying your yeah, yeah, absolute like, best to be killing at every service yeah, yeah. because you're trying to recover. And if I'm coming out, that means I'm trying to support you. Back, and I, yeah. I don't care about this pandemic or I'm done yeah. with it and I'm here to support this because I could still be eating at home, but I'm done with that. I want to yeah, go to this I've restaurant, right? Yeah. Like I'm here you know, for far more reasons than, I, than it used to be where it's just this is what we do for yeah. dinner every night, right? Exactly. Right. This dude. No, messed I'm up. I'm the same way. I'm like purposefully trying to go eat somewhere. Yeah, sure. And I and I look at that. But I, what's crazy, and I and maybe it's because I I don't really know 100 percent yet. But when I go to a restaurant and I don't see like the owner there, especially right now, like yeah. whoever's li- you know life is on the line with mm-hmm. this, I, it boggles my mind. Just yeah. because, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but I've got everything to risk. And maybe, maybe other people don't, but like, I, I'm like hands on, you For know, sure. the whole entire time, probably too much. Cause at some point you're going to have to let go a little bit to grow, you know, yeah. but I, right now, especially I don't understand what, what's, you know, if I go, just like you said, in that there should be someone walking around or an owner that's like, Hey, I want to make sure this is working. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm, but, I mean, like I said, you we both spent a lot of time in the industry. I, I was manager. I when when a cook called in, I played back of the house. I waited tables. I ran bars. I right. opened bars. I opened restaurants. Like I've ran the gamut. And I wish going, I would have worked back at going going back to this this experience <laughs> we had. I mean, the restaurant was pretty busy, and that's great. But everything that just kind of is finishing now. Yeah, I feel like I would be trying oh my, my damnedest, right? This dude messed up an order on everything we ordered. Messed up something yeah. on everything we ordered. Like, uh, and messed up an appetizer. Messed up uh, Jared, Jared's uh, entree. Like, he asked specifically for sides. And one of my biggest pet peeves, and I'm not going to be rude about it, but people think they're too cool to write stuff down. Yeah. Like, I don't remember. Oh, like, you don't God. have to. Like, yeah. I, tr- yeah. I thought that for a minute when I waited <laughs> tables. Like, yeah. this is stupid. Yeah. Like, I'm not standing in front of a computer. Write things down. Yeah, nobody thinks yeah. – nobody's like, I'm going to tip this dude better because he remembered yeah, it. Nah, I'm going to tip you better if you get my order right. Yeah, if you do it right the <laughs> yeah. first time, you're going to yeah. make like, more money. Use your notepad, bro. So he messed up that order. Forgot it, Forgot yeah. the dessert I ordered completely. And I just didn't even bring it up at that point. Yeah. I was like, we're just done. And yeah, I was like, cool, thanks, out. man. We'll see you all next time. And my wife's nah. just like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, it is, but we're just – we're what done. Are we gonna, yeah, what am I going to do? Wait 30 more minutes for him to try to remember this dessert? No, I was like, cool, thanks, brother. You know, whatever. Food was fine. We're out. You yeah. know, whatever. But it just – and when manager never touched the table, like, hey, that was a big part when I worked at restaurants. Like, you need to touch tables. Touch yeah. tables. Everything good here? Plus, I feel like with Every- the manager, you know who is, like, your strong weight staff and who's your not – Real who, quick. Who you need Real to kind of, like, maybe go behind yeah. a little bit. Yeah. You know, like, Real oh, this guy's fine. He's taking yeah. care of business. This guy over here. Yeah, maybe uh, I need to pay attention to that section a little yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, that's man. A, but that's the, a food uh, industry conversation. Exactly, yeah. like. Someone who's never worked in there has no I idea. Believe the, no I believe clue. the correct then, term is called a weed bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yep. there you go. Yeah. And, and it's just like you don't know if you don't know, but uh, just trying to be a decent human being, yeah. man. Like it is so rough, uh, and I see it. I mean, because they walk to my trailer. I mean, they're yeah. sitting right here. And then, the, you know, I, hey, I'll be more than happy if you're not happy. I will. I promise you, I'll give you your money back. Or I'll try to redo your order For really sure. fast Let's... so we didn't mess up anything, you know. So I, I just – that's the hard part is if – but some people don't come. They don't they don't say like, hey, I have a problem. They'll get on face. No, oh, that's the worst. Blast your, uh, blast your life away. And then yeah. they have no – most people, yeah. unless they they've listened to this or they've talked to me, have no idea how much we give back and we try to yeah. do – and and we are one of the highest paying as a trailer. We're one of the highest paying um, people or, or um, uh, employers 
in the food industry yeah. in the state of Arkansas. Like we have some good things going, and then you want to write something because I forgot your coleslaw. Why like, didn't you just tell me? Yeah, just, I would have fixed it right yeah, then. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. I hate that. Like, like uh, Yelp, would, Yelp. But they just blo- they, oh. they they. Oh my god! Yelp you, needs yeah. to just die they in can, structure fire. Me. South Park <laughs> Yelp episode yeah. is amazing. Oh. <laughs> Cause, but it's true. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. I mean, it's true how people treat you like that. And then they'll yeah. just want to take your entire family away from you. And it's like, what What just, I mean, please, please come back. In, in the general public, most people, we've got a following now. Yeah. And so they defend me and I don't have to really say anything. But I always, good, bad, or indifferent, I always say thank you. You know, if I appreciate the support. And I do mean that. And then if sure. I see something negative, I'm like, hey, man, I... I'm, I work in this trailer and I'm right here. If, if there's a problem, I promise you, I'll give you your money back. Yeah. In fact, my name's before on the outside I left for, of it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, please, like, whatever. But I, uh, before I left for duck season, I had one lady come up there and we were closing. Um, and, and, uh, but we made, we made her food, you know, no big deal. That I'm fine with that. Um, but I, like, where we're at, she had a long drive home and I'll tell you how I know that, but, but we, we made the food and then she drove home and then she began to get on Facebook and get mad because it was cold and everything was cold. And I'm like, you just ordered out of a food truck and it is cold. It's November. Um, but I, I know that that's true. And so I, um, my to go boxes, I don't know. I mean, I have, here's, here's one right here, but like I, these are our to-go boxes. Like that ain't no foam plastic. Yeah, These yeah, are we ain't putting them in the Yeti here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. These are microwavable. Yeah, I did that for a reason because of travel and everything else. But I found out. So here's here's my ADHD and everything and else crazy. But so she puts this on Facebook cold and just slams me. Right, just slams me. Uh, and so I say, uh, I look at it and you know, I say, oh, I'm sorry. I'll give you your money back. Oh no, you don't have to give us our money back. You need it. You know, you're a business. And I said, ah, 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 woo. It's, I don't. And why'd you say this? You. Right, right. And why did, you, why did you feel the need to do all of this? So, anyway. I'm offering you a solution. You say you don't want it. So, it sounds to me like you just, you just <laughs> yeah, wanted to bitch. Exactly. Exactly. And then, but like, whatever. The, she's, she's a little older. And I don't know if she realizes that her name is right there. So, I know. So For I do sure. a little young buck yeah. Facebook a stalking. A little stalking. I, I found out where she lived, and I found out, um, you know, that she owned a small business. So then I found out her address, and I <laughs> mailed her a <laughs> refund check. I didn't tell her I was going to do it. I just mailed her so she would know that old Bart, yeah. number one, knew where she You're lived. Like, I see you. Knew I, that you. I didn't hear I see you. So, <laughs> Take your like 975 back, yeah. you know? Yeah, and so I had, my account, <laughs> I, I had my account, and I said, look, before I leave, write this check and mail it. And yeah. she's like, why are you mailing a check? And I said, don't worry about it. Yeah. And so but I just I, I watched her cash it, too. And I'm like, okay, you didn't need it or you didn't need it. Either way. You know, I can. I know where you live at. Yeah. So <laughs> I feel like I would have probably escalated that situation by bringing you that money back in nickels. But that's yeah. Oh, yeah. I and am. just all of pennies. But like, hey, but- I, I want you to remake <laughs> this, and here's a sparklets jug. I would, full I, would of just, I would just call the home phone. <laughs> yeah. Right. Be like, like, hi, it's me. Hey, Karen. You said you hey, you, you drove all this home. It was cold. Then you said you didn't want a refund. I'm just asking you, what do you want? Yeah, please. You, like you, got any, the- you complained that it wasn't right. I offered to make it right, and you said you don't mean to make it right. So what are we doing here? You tell me how to make this right, and I'll do it. Exactly. Uh, record scratch. Right. No answer. I'm and guaranteed. And, then they, and it boggled my mind because oh, yeah. she owns a small business. Uh, of so, all like, you people. Would think, for yeah. sure. You would think you would relate to that. Like, yeah. that doesn't make any sense why you would do that. But anyways, oh, well. Oh, well. Um, that was funny, and I let yeah, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And so we just – Grew from it and learned, and then I it was honestly like the last day, so I I went to honey break and I was gone for three months, and then when I came back, I was like, you know what, we're not going to run five days a week. Let's run uh, three days a week, and that gives us more private time for parties. Yeah. And um, we run Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so yeah. it was all worth it. It's just I've had a couple, you know, rude people, 
but of it course. is what it is. You got to have thick skin in the food industry and yeah. just try to take the good with the bad. But but what people don't know and the, those that are listening and because there's I know there's good people that listen to y'all, but it's so hard because it's what you expect. You expect good when you go to a restaurant because you're paying, right? Yeah, you sure. expect this is going to be good food or some substance that's going to be okay. But but those it, more people are are likely to write a bad review. Than they are even to say, "Hey, food was great as always." Here's five stars. People, people don't do that, but like, it's so important to a business owner, especially a restaurant, that people leave reviews. And, and you know, if they're bad, they're bad. But at the same time, if you can write a good review, whether it's like, "Yeah, as always, great taste and normal flavors," whatever. Yeah. But people now look at you know you don't stay at a hotel without looking at reviews um, at least very, i know that's very true so, that is very true and it's true. the same concept with food i hate food that it's like that times. but you're right yeah hey what do you do what do you, you know, do what do you do so we were in hotels this weekend i i'd never stayed at this certain hotel and we did a pet friendly one because we took our dogs with us i'm looking at reviews like is this is this just a garbage hotel because they're pet friendly and all reviews are good hotel is great but i looked stay at the kiva inn. right i looked at reviews no nah, uh, Homewood Sweet. Dude, should have stayed at the Kiva. I do Roll like the dice. I, yeah, those are either one of them. Homewoods are nice too. <laughs> Camelot Inn. That's another Ooh. good one. We stayed in Lubbock. In Amarillo, oh. we stayed in Airbnb so we could run the dogs in the backyard. Oh, okay, so I was but. I was talking about. So I we, he went to Amarillo this weekend or Lubbock this and weekend. And there's the Camelot. And it's Camelot a- Inn. Camelot Inn and the Kiva Inn and the Five Seasons. Those are three hotels that. Uh, I was in a band for a while, and we would stay at those. The uh, Camelot Inn, we played the, an outdoor festival one time, and everybody got muddy, and so we tracked mud through the hotel, and they thought we pooped everywhere. <laughs> 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 We're like, it's mud. He's like, it's brown, so it's poop. We're like, that's, <laughs> that's absurd. Brown Thank does you. not mean that it's poop. It just it means that it's they mud. We poop everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my Jeez. gosh. So, yeah, that was an interesting phone call from a manager like, Hey, uh, the uh, the hotel called and they said you guys pooped everywhere. <laughs> I'm not saying wow. y'all aren't capable of doing yeah, this. Yeah, I'm just saying it seemed a bit out of out of sorts for you guys, but uh, you know, uh, didn't know if it got wild or not. Yeah, yeah. didn't know yeah, like that it, kind of west. It is Amarillo, so crazy things happen up there. Gross, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Whew. Yeah, Should've, Amarillo. They, I'm sure they left us a review. This band pooped everywhere. <laughs> uh, Without a doubt. So you've, you've talked a little bit about Honey Break, and I mean, I feel like if you've duck hunted for longer than a year, and you if you've YouTube duck hunting, and that's all you put in, it won't take you very long to get to some sort of a Honey Break video. Or some, you will find out about Honey Break, no matter if you can afford to go there or not. You know that yeah. that's like the... Uh, that is the premier place to go probably in the entire world to duck hunt. So what's it like? Cause I have not so, been <laughs> except for on a YouTube video. <laughs> be, being my back of the house, you get to see everything, which is awesome. Sure. Um, but so it's a family, um, which is really cool. I mean, good old boys are running it and they've got a great, uh, backer on that. Mr. Michael, he's, uh, just super cool dude. Uh, and then drew Keith, is just um, one of a kind. You know, if you're on his team, you're he, he's, he'll die for you. He'll do whatever he possibly can for you, and he's running the show. Um, and then uh, Jared Moffat with the dogs and the ducks and just the experience that explode from all that. But those are just the two main guys. You know, those are the two that yeah. they started it. They were the ones that used to do all the cooking and cleaning and everything else, and now it's grown into what it is. But it is everything that you see on the show and, and more with how nice it is. I mean, from the time that you pull in, uh, you know, we have valet parking for you. Uh, we take your bags to your room. We have lockers for you. Um, if you want, you can wear loafers to every blind. I mean, you don't – It's it's it is uh, – intense all the guns are rob roberts sb3s super black eagles you know all that stuff everything's to the 10th degree um the only thing we can't control is the duck sure yeah. and that's and that's what it is i mean it is um the honey break experience 
Mm. And yeah. we can control. And, and so we have crappie fishing from some of the best crappie uh, um, anglers on our lake. And so we, we hire them. So we have afternoon stuff. We have a five stand. We have a 15 stand in, in a walking course. That's really cool. Um, and then we have a, an observation tower that looks over the South Hole uh, that's partners with Leopold. And so some of the latest and greatest optics are up there that's not even been released yet. And so just looking through some of that glass, even as a cook, I mean, it's just like, holy crap, you know. And then yeah. um, it's just everything. It's all in the details from our food, uh, five-star, you know, courses for lunch, dinner, and breakfast, made-to-order omelets before you go in the blind, uh, some of the best dogs in the world. Um, and that's not, that's not just me talking. That's them and their ribbons that they have. I mean, every, uh, the majority of all of the retrieves that the blind, they, the duck, the dogs do is a blind retrieve. Almost every single one of them. Yeah. Uh, and those dogs will, you, you better not tell Jared Moffat that that dog can't go an 800 yard blind or what, however far you think a mile long blind. It don't matter. Yeah. He'll send that dog and that dog will go get it. Like that's how good those dogs are. Um, awesome. and so it's just, it's really cool being around some of that. I'm lucky because I have no clue and they know I have no clue, but they've, uh, ingrained me in some stuff and I'm looking forward to the future just because like this year I started cooking in the blinds, which they've never done before. Um, but that's where I started. I started cooking off the side of a tree, you know, and, and just making stuff work and then putting out really good dishes. So, so we integrated that to some of our special clients and some of the high profile clients and, and then who knows where it might lead, you know, whether it's a everyday thing or whatever. But then I just, I get to keep my skills sharp at honey break. And, and again, um, a lot of the people that come there, have turned into customers of mine now. So we kind of worked as a team and then we support each other during duck season. So um, it's been really wonderful. But as far as pictures and what it looks like, it's uh, it's not jazzed up too much other than what you see. I mean, it is amazing. I bet so. Man. What an an experience. Bucket list, maybe. No doubt. Oh, I mean, it's for sure. And And that's the fun ones. Like we get, I would say, the majority of business is a, uh, that's why it's, it is what it is, but it's corporate, a lot yeah, of corporate yeah. stuff, a lot of, um, businessy people, which is cool. They still enjoy it. And those are some fun times, but the fun hunts are when it's like a three generation family, you know, yeah. son, father, son, you know, dad, and then grandpa, um, and they've saved up their money to come to honey break yeah. and we, we get to take extra care of them. Yeah, and, and they're going to, they're going to cherish every second of it. And that. I feel like you probably as a, as like just th- those guys at honey break, I bet they like those people the best. Like yeah. no doubt I when, mean, you, when that CEO yeah. from God pay, knows paychecks, where, paycheck, paycheck, but, paycheck, but when you yeah. get that kind of a family, the passionate people, yeah, that who are like, man, we've saved up we've, 10 years. Yeah. For this. We've been saving for this. Yeah. Like we can't believe we're here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that's and that's and those you even see that at dinner time yeah. there, and those are your grateful people of just cooking and and all that, and that's that's the yeah. cool part. They're really nice, and they do that. Like, I eat corn um, dogs. And you're like, no, yeah. we're not eating corn dogs. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, no wagyu beef, yeah. corn dogs or something, but it <laughs> yes. ain't gonna be no normal business. So, yeah. um, but no, that's a lot not of fun. And then like they they integrated me into their show, which is really cool. Uh, that's the one that you guys seen. Yep. Um, so that's kind of special, you know, they didn't have to do that. Um, but, but they did. And so that's really cool. And then we just got back filming, like I was talking about earlier, um, trying to make something work. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's a little concept, um, you know, timber to table that we want to take off with. But like I went, um, kind of, kind of the same way the honey break episode went, but, a little bit different in the fact that uh, I've, I've only been turkey hunting once with a friend of mine, and then I shot a Rio, which was cool, but um, I wanted to do some more cooking with it. And my buddy Chip, who's uh, pretty pretty good at uh, cameras and, uh, and filming and editing and, and putting it all together, he's been around the block a time or two with that. He's like, man, why don't you come up to New York, let's film you, and then let's cook something. So I just said, okay, I'll buy a plane ticket. We can went up there to his turkey camp, family turkey camp. I went. We spent three days. I shot an Eastern. 
and one of um, Chip's friends, um, Sal, he uh, Salvo, he owns or he's, his family owns a 34 year old pizzeria. It's all family owned. His grandpa started it, um, and so we things started connecting the dots. So I shot this Eastern. I, I we we filmed how to dissect it and different things to do with the legs and the quarters and and just how to show people what to do. But the main thing here um, is I took the breast, I grinded it up in a grinder on a picnic table right after killing it, um, and I, I cooked it in a cast iron skillet with some of my seasonings, made this little sausage out of it. Uh, then we took it back to Salvo's place, uh, and I cooked a wild, tur- the very first wild turkey pizza, uh, New York style. Huh. So in a New York pizzeria, which we closed it down and all this other stuff, middle of the night, really. Yeah. Um, but I used the same oven that his grandpa used. So that's awesome. special to me. Plus the turkey was just a bonus on the top, yeah, you that know. Is rad. That is and, uh, awesome, we filmed, man. we filmed all that and I just want to show people what I did. And so I hope, I hope people, I hope that turns into something, whether it's, you know, uh, on an, an online base type thing and we can do more of it. We have a concept type that we're kind of going with off that honey break, um, thing. And, and, you know, there's, there's a meat eater and that's really cool, but I'm old Bart and I think I got a different way of showing and telling a story. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a goofball. Like (laughs) I, I honestly barely know how to hunt. I, I, I try to, and I try to do the best I can. I'm just usually with really good people. They're like, Hey, Bart, don't do that. And the reason why they're patient, the reason why they're patient with me is because I'm cooking a ribeye over here. You know, yeah. it's like, Hey, you want to eat? You don't mess with the cook, you know? Yeah, okay. Exactly. I, I just take care of me. And, and, uh, and then, and then we meet really good people. And then, you know, um, we've had a lot of cool stuff happen. And, and I hope that that turns into something, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but it, it, worst case scenario is it doesn't, and I had a lot of fun. So who cares? Win win. Absolutely. Yeah, like, oh, man, yeah. that's awesome. Totally. So it's that's that's our most recent thing that we've done, and then you know we, we've we started doing more weddings, like more high end weddings, and then uh, well, again we're opening up this store um, within the next couple weeks, and so um, looking forward to that and. And we're going to constantly be doing some more outdoor stuff at the same time. Uh, try to get this this show, um, you know, for anybody that's listening. If, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where that's going to take us. But again, uh, if it turns into something, that would be cool. If not, we had a blast doing it. So yeah. I don't know. Sounds but, awesome. Where yeah, would, uh, it was, where, I guess. So you said maybe on like YouTube, maybe on social media, something like that. Just TV. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think, uh, you know, I'm not big. On, on, I don't think, especially with, I think anybody can agree, n- uh, the platforms are not necessarily the TV anymore, right? No. Um, so we got apps, we got uh, YouTube. I think YouTube might be the way to go and just, or, or even a network, you know, yeah. I, I, there's some newer networks out there, but I don't think we have to be, that's the thing, I don't think that we have to be on a sportsman or a, nah, or a, or a pursuit sure, no. or something like that. I don't. I think we could be on the Magnolia Network. I think that we could be on uh, the Food Network. Yeah. I think that I think that that's we could we belong anywhere, but we we would probably have to tone down a few things because we get a little buck wild. But we might be okay, and, and nothing might take off that way, and we might just be on YouTube, and that's fine too. It's just funding, you know how that goes. But uh, even if we did one at a time here and there, but someone's got to do it. I mean, Meat Eater got started somehow, and it's it's kind of a, a mix between a Meat Eater and. And like a food network and, and jackass, really. It's kind of, <laughs> it's, I Sounds mean, awesome. it's, it's a, it, yeah, I mean, it's a mix. And I think it's, we don't take ourselves too serious. And if you watch the, the honey break episode, uh, you can tell, like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not serious. I, I get to a serious part, especially yeah. when it comes to harvesting or killing an animal, uh, taking its life. Sure. Um, but there's plenty but of time the, to have some good times around that. Yeah, and you don't, and I want to teach people out there that it's not that serious, guys. It's you know, because, and the reason why, going back to my mom, she was 44 years old. Don't, yeah. don't take yourself too serious. And then, you know, keep striving, keep grinding, uh, but just know that, uh, in the flick of a switch, you could be done. And, and, and that's the thing. Are you, are you ready to be done right now? If you ended right now, are you happy or, or if, are your kids or, Whoever is there, something that was undone that needs to be tidied up. 
what is what is it going to hurt? You just make a quick text or a phone call and be like, "Hey, I never told you this, but I'm sorry." Yeah. What is that? That hurts nothing. No, and, but it makes you grow. It uh, makes you grow as a person, and it makes you better as a person. Absolutely. Um, but you know, don't take yourself so serious, especially when it comes to hunting. It was supposed to be fun. Like, gee whiz, don't I've seen people, st- you know, cut people's boat lines over public land hunting and just fist fighting and my god like it's this much. is stupid yeah it's yeah too much. so i'm out we've been there it's not ain't got nothing to do with me <laughs> meet me at the boat ramp meet me yeah. at the boat ramp yeah we've had some uh, we've had some experiences on public land as well so oh i mean i watched a guy poop in a guy's cooler he <laughs> left in the back of his truck you had, that's you you had a poop story and i had a poop story and you mentioned it, i was that's like i guess crazy. we can talk about poop but i yeah, watched a guy a- we got almost a fist fight and the dude left a cooler in the back of his truck, and I know a fella that was like, you know what, I'm fixing to poop in this guy's cooler. <laughs> Pooped right in it, man. I'm like, God dang. Right in the like, cooler. Boy, can you imagine? Oh, that's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> and then you get back, you open your cooler full of there's drinks, poop and there's in a giant it. patty. There's a giant, <laughs> oh, you know, that's, that's not, yeah, that's terrible. Oh. So, I think but, don't put it out yeah. with your boots. Don't put it out with your boots, Ted. <laughs> don't tell me my business, devil woman. <laughs> There's poop in it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, so I don't know, but I mean, you know, I, as far as old bar and where we're going and how we're going, I, I just want to continue to mix uh, cooking and giving back domestic violence is important to us. And I think connecting people like y'all and connecting people in the absolutely. outdoor space and just letting people know that it, it's not the personalities out there anymore. Everybody's, just trying to, I think we're trying to blend the old with the new, and, and there's a flip. Yeah. There's a change of the times, you know. Uh, I think all that's coming, and uh, the the future is bright, especially with old Bart. Uh, like I said, we got a lot more stuff going on, and we've got some good partners that are going to help take care of us, and, um, and then good friends. So, 100%. good support. Well, we, uh, we got to get you down here and do some, some pig hunting or some crane hunting or hunting ducks yeah. with us or something you know we'd love to we'd love Absolutely. to hang out with you and we got plenty of pigs man. yeah Whew, we tra- we do a yeah. lot of pig trapping yeah i yeah. mean i would love it absolutely all you got all we gotta do is make a plan let's do it and then we could just take it and we can we can take it so we actually kill uh pigs in, in at honey break mm-hmm. and i took uh, their back strap out and i smoked it oh my gosh it's delicious Abs- yeah. absolutely delicious my yeah. buddy sent my i took two friends out this weekend to our little lease out in East Texas, and one of them never shot a non-feathered animal, and he got a 190-pound uh, boar. Uh, he he texts me, he's like, big pig down. And I was like, oh, that's cool, you know, I'll be there in 30 minutes, wait and see if the sounder comes out. So I'm sitting sure. up at camp and, you know, just finish my beard and then kind of roll out there. And I'm thinking, he, you know, he said big pig, but, yeah. yeah. If you yeah, never shot a pig, every really pig's know. a big yeah, pig. Exactly. And I roll up, I was like, oh, yeah, that is a big pig, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another my other buddy, he shot some, but he shot a little one, and uh, he sent me pictures of carnitas he made tonight. And he's, I was like, delicious. He said, "Oh my gosh, so, so good." That's what's up. So good. And because when we were cutting them up, yeah, no, you know, talk, people talking part. about, oh, you yeah. you can't eat those, or you don't want to eat them with a certain size. Nah, yeah, I don't think that's not true. No, it's a matter right. of perspective, and if you want to, yeah, if you want to do the prep work, and yeah. I've went over that in some videos, but. It's all about prep work, man. Getting it clean, getting the, the core temp down. And, yep, absolutely. And then, if, I mean, there's always an apple juice, Brian. Always good with pork. You know, sure. always. All kinds of options, but we we'll yeah, digress. Yeah. Well, man, it was uh, such a pleasure to talk to you. We'll let you get back. I know you're super busy, and uh, we appreciate that. Oh, it's the, all good, time, man. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Appreciate the time and uh, man, thank you. It was, yeah. it was great insight. It's cool to see you with all out with all these yeah. duck hunters. Super it's cool to talk about honey break. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for your time, man. It's awesome. Absolutely. I'm licking some of those spices. Absolutely, yeah. And if I can ever do anything to help y'all, and uh, if we ever, like I said, we do a pig thing and maybe do a um, I come down there and kill one, and and then we can cook it up. I mean, that goes a lot along with what I just filmed. So, you say when, basically. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. around here. We can make it happen. We can make that happen immediately. You don't even need a hunting license anymore for that. <laughs> Yep. That's a beautiful yeah. thing. Beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, I do appreciate it. Yeah, y'all. And again, if anybody wants to check anything out, uh, oldbartsoutherneats.com uh, and then oldbart uh, likes on Instagram. 
that Facebook page is Old Bart Southern Eats, but uh, I mainly do everything off of Instagram. Sure. That's and then it all connects, you know. But we have to have it for a restaurant and try sure. to build that up. But for the most part, you can keep up with us on uh, Old Bart Likes L I K E S. So perfect. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you. Thanks for. Uh, We're right on, fellas. We'll yeah, be in I touch. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. Yeah. No. Let Storm it rip. Thank you guys. All right. Is the Thanks, best. man. Have a good Grinch, one. The captain. Aim, the helper, Jordan, the problem solver. I hope you like Stormwater Creek. Stormwater Creek.